when I hear about the, the minor program, I said, okay, I get help from UNHCR through the Ropeji, and I come through IRC, so they help me to come here. Then if somebody need help too, then I can do that. I think, you know, the program, because everybody need help, but if they do that, then we can help too. So I was a foster child when I was little, and then I went into kinship, and so my kinship care was with my grandparents, and that was just really such a foundation for me. That was, no matter what had happened, I learned so much from them. That was I, I, that, the best experience for me. You know, I think we believe that uh, you know, a safe environment is a cornerstone for a child's well-being, and so being in a position to, to provide that was the reason why I really chose to do so. I was by myself and taking care of my mom and my daughter. And I said, oh, I don't think they're gonna accept me. And she said, you never know, just apply. And I go, okay. So I did, and they accept me, and, and I love it. I like to do this. My mom passed away and everything, so, but I'm still with somebody with my, in my house, you know? I think they asked us to accept a placement when I was like about to give birth, and I said no. And then they asked again, and, and um, I came up with all the reasons why this was a bad time. And um, Mark was the one who said, I think we should do it. And I was like, what? Uh, okay. So, so we did. Um, and I kick myself every time I think, like, we almost missed out. So, I can't believe we almost missed out. The Unaccompanied Minor Program at Catholic Charities is a program that serves unaccompanied youth who are traveling to the United States without parents or guardians. They're either refugees, asylees, um, special immigrant juveniles, um, victims of trafficking, or certain other statuses. And so we place them in foster care and help them get connected to services for medical, dental, educational, legal. And our goal is to help them prepare for young adulthood and become self-sufficient here in the United States. When I got here, it was kind of like scary. I didn't know English, so Sometimes like I just go move my hands and show them stuff with my hands, kind of like using sign language. I came when she said, come here, you, this is going to be a bedroom. Uh, I was like, it's going to be all my bedroom for myself, you know, I was, I was by myself. Everyone has a story, so yeah, I was a refugee. Yeah, uh, I had to leave my country because there's war and I just left here by myself. Yeah, came along. So I've had different experiences. I've had four different foster families. But and then there's always a family that matches you. At the beginning, I was very tense to myself. I was like, ah, I'm just changing another foster family. That's what it looked like to me. But and then as soon as I came in, we like interacted, slowly building up the relationship, realizing that I'm being respected the way I am, like being treated like I wanted to be treated. And yeah, my family was like, they're just so awesome. I don't know what words can I say. It's good when you have a place where you belong. When the child is placed in their home, it's considered their foster son or foster daughter. We have youth that call the foster parents mom and dad um, and call their, their bio children their, their siblings. And the families are what gives them that support and that stability that they need to be able to achieve their dreams, really. Well, the main reason I changed my name to their name is because they support me so much. And I don't think like there's another way that I'm going to pay them for that. You know, I work on it, I went to court for it, uh, I pay for it. So now I am Herrick now. I was very proud, I felt as though, you know, we had, we had done something right for her to want to take our last name. It, you can go anywhere and you come to me and say, Elizabeth, now I'm done with the program. And then I'm thinking I, I support his team to be here with you. 
And I said, we are okay, we can meet you and you can come visit us. We are a family now. Yeah, we were actually, it wasn't very long into Rashad living with us and we were sitting on the couch in here at nighttime. Um, and he peeped his head around the corner and he said, can I, can I call you mom and dad? I was like, sure. And then he left and I was like, mm. He's absolutely become our son. I can't imagine life without him in it. She's family, that's all. For Maria, I was so happy that she got in, into graduation. I want her to be successful. Without Georgina, I, won't, I don't know how my life is. She's like an example for me. She's the best. <laughs> I don't know. Every single morning, we would come up and tackle him. It was a crazy house with him here. When Rashad moved out, I felt very, very, very sad because he was a really good brother to us. I couldn't imagine my life without my big brother. Well, I was sad, but I know they are not my kids. They have to leave, you know? They have to go. They have to keep going. They have to learn how to leave. There's a team of people that's working with each family to make sure that both the youth and the foster parents are successful. Working with Catholic Charities has been great. You know, we were brand new foster parents, and so they taught us about any kind of paperwork we needed to do, and her case manager was very easy to get a hold of. Uh, you never feel like you're out on your own island. So you end up having like kind of team meetings, but you're also getting feedback from the case manager. Catholic Charities helped me a lot. They always are with me. They don't just ignore me. When I started, I said, how can I do this? This is happening, and they tell me, oh, we are going over there. And they come and see me and everything. My case manager helps me a lot to achieve the goals I want. Um, I especially thought when, when it was time for Rashad to move out, they did a really good job of preparing him for independence. It was great to sort of come around Rashad and come up with sort of a transition plan and, and to actually put it down on paper and kind of work through a, a sort of life planning. I'm, I'm very happy that we chose Catholic Charities to partner with um, for fostering.